Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. This is the next video in my academic publishing series. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to read an academic paper. Now, there's all kinds of videos on this particular topic. I just want to describe what I am looking for in an academic paper and just give you it sort of from my perspective. This also builds on the series and gets to where I ultimately want to take this to, which is how you might publish your own academic paper, or at least the process that I go through when I do such a thing, and also why you might want to do that. So as far as reading an academic paper, this all depends really on what you're trying to accomplish with that particular paper. Why are you reading it? I looked at some of the other videos describing people just going through the process uh, of reading papers. Everybody has a different goal for this, and it's good to understand what your goal is. I see some that will describe reading 14 or 20 or some crazy number of, of papers per week. It all depends on what you're doing. If you're if you're covering these papers and writing blog posts on them, then yeah, you probably need to be reading quite a few of these. Typically, the papers are on the absolute latest, latest technology that is still being vetted in many cases. So a lot of people who are working in the data science field may not need to read this cutting edge of research. You may just simply want to be to remain aware of them. And of course, if you find this kind of thing interesting, please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you're notified of any additional videos that I create. If you just want very, very high level overview of what a particular paper is covering, see if it's covered by one of the channels that, that focuses just on this. Two Minute Papers is great. This is a YouTube channel that, that I follow and I've used just for high level summaries of some of the, the papers that I am interested in knowing just at a very superficial level. There's other channels that cover the same sort of thing as well. This is definitely not the focus of, of my own channel. I'm more of a specialist rather than trying to go general across, across all of the papers. The sheer volume of papers available is truly mind-boggling. Archive, which you see here, is, I mean, anybody can publish to this. This is completely open access, and it there's really no initial peer review for this. This is preprints. It can be very difficult to focus in on what you want to read just from this alone. This is where Archive Sanity can be really, really good. This is arxiv-sanity.com. I'm not going to really cover this because there's a great introductory video that does the same thing right here. But definitely check this out. This is this is a way to quickly sift through the massive amount of papers that are being published into the ones that you are actually interested in. Now let's talk about how to actually read a paper, or at least how I read a paper. It depends on what your goal really is. Do you want to understand that algorithm well enough that you could actually implement it? That's one thing. That's probably, to me, almost the, the lowest level, the most intense read that you need to spend on something. Forget reading 14 papers in a week. I'll spend a week on one paper if that's truly what I need to do. Because believe me, I have absolutely been there with a couple of uh, papers. Like when I implemented the Atom trainer for NCOG completely from scratch. And we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. But then maybe you are trying to cite additional papers and you just want to know if that other paper is, is something relevant to include. Then you might just want to look at the abstract. So let's, let's start to get into what this is and how you would look at that. One paper that I recommend is a very good... It's a very good paper because it's, it's got Jeffrey Hinton as a co-author. It has to do with neural networks, and it's extremely approachable. It's extremely easy to read, or it's about as easy to read as a neural network paper will get from, from a high-end um, scholar, and it's also very relevant. It's the paper that describes dropout. Dropout is a great overfitting reducing technique for neural networks, and it it's extremely relevant and it's it's a pretty approachable paper. So let me use that one as my example. Um, a lot of the usual crew in Toronto, 
but this is this is a great paper. I have read this completely through and I've implemented this this from scratch. So this is the first thing to do is just to read the title, drop out a simple way to prevent neural networks from overfitting. The thing about these papers is they will use a lot of technical terms. A big thing with these papers is they try to use consistent terminology. Never invent a term. This is a big difference between industry and academia. Uh, industry, marketing, it's all about, um, it's all about inventing a term. I have heard marketers sometimes refer to, oh, we don't use artificial intelligence. We moved beyond that. We use cognitive computing. Okay, great. What on earth is that other than something, they always want to say the old thing is old. Here's our new thing that we've, uh, that, that we've invented that is, that is truly something new. It's what you got to do as a marketer. As an academic, you if what you're you need to build your piece onto that existing web of knowledge, and you don't want to fuzzy the links to what was there before you. So you'll see academic terms or technical terms, and if you don't understand those, then go to Wikipedia, that's a great source, Khan Academy, things like that, and learn what they are. So here we have the abstract. You want to always read through this. Sometimes the abstract is all you need to read in a paper. So in that case, if I am doing a literature review where I'm trying to cite additional papers in my own paper and I'm trying to build that web of knowledge and show where I actually sit in it, I'll read a ton of abstracts. So would I say that I read 30 papers that week? No, but I, I read 30 abstracts. So this is the abstract. I would suggest if you're just if you're if you're really just starting with looking at these kind of papers, I would just read these abstracts, pick up on the vocab words and try to make sure you understand them just so that you know what the abstract is is saying. I mean, if you can go to something like a journal of machine learning research and pull up the list of the last 30 or so articles that were published, and you can read each of the abstracts and know what that paper is talking about. That's that gets you used to the lingo and can be can be quite helpful. When I first started with these, I would read the abstracts and really not know exactly what that particular what problem a particular paper was solving. And it just gets better over time. And honestly, I still see abstracts that that blow me away. This is just such as the reality, but that is how I expand into new areas that I am not a specialist in and want to know more about. So this paper, what it is talking about is it is showing you a way that you can turn off certain neurons in the neural network just during training. They all come back when you're going to actually use the neural network to try to make that neural network not so specialized. You don't want neural networks to memorize your training data. You want them to, um, you want them to generalize and be able to handle additional data. So the way a lot of these papers will start out is with an introduction. This is trying to really explain this will, this, sh you, this should be written typically not assuming that you even read the abstract. This starts the paper and it show, it begins to show you where it fits in with existing research and what it's trying to solve. So dropout and preventing overfitting, this falls into a bigger category called regularization, which in neural networks is essentially ways that you're working with the weights of the neural network, which is what it's really, which is where learning is actually taking place, and trying to prevent overfitting. There's a bunch of ways to go about this. L1 and L2 is an older technique that goes all the way back to linear regression, Lesso and Ridge. But you may or may not know those terms. You won't know those until you start to look those up. So you can look up L1 and L2 regularization, start to understand what this is. This is just showing you how to get back to where this, where this paper came from before. This is essentially a, this is a really good sentence right here. 
it is defining what regularization is and at least according according to this paper and pretty much in general with unlimited computation the best way to regularize a fixed model is to average the prediction of all possible settings of parameters weighting each setting by its posterior probability of the given training data so you you weight the more accurate ones better so in neural networks you would typically train it's the problem is you're starting with random weights so some neural networks will have better initial sets of weights than others you might train 10 neural networks and average the results of those together and that would give you typically a better prediction than all the other neural networks so what this technique is doing is essentially getting you that same sort of averaging but just from one neural network and it does it by dropping out individual neurons so that's what the introduction does. It kind of sets what has been there before and starts to describe really what this particular paper is going to do. Motivation can also be good. This is, so introduction is sort of telling you what they did. Motivation is telling you why they did it and what specific problem they're trying to solve. Related work. Most ones will have this beyond the introduction. The introduction will lay a little bit down as far as what prior work there was for this and now this is where they really lock where this paper is in to previous research when you're writing a paper you'll want to look very much at the related work of papers that you determine to be pretty similar to or that are the predecessor papers to what you're trying to put out that's how you can get additional papers put really on your on your radar so to speak related work now this is this is fairly interesting some I mean some papers will go further and shallower on these and by the way everything I'm showing you here for a conference proceeding versus a journal pretty similar they're all structured really pretty similar most journals will be longer the papers than the conference proceedings but not necessarily the case if you do happen to look at dissertations so essentially what what people have written for as part of the requirement for a phd or similar doctorate the literature review or the related work will be much 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 bigger now this section here model description this is where they describe the actual model that they're creating which is the dropout neural network it's very similar to an existing neural network so this is this is where you get very much into sort of the formal mathematical description of what it is. They essentially define the, the dropout neural network. They, they are doing this comparing normal to dropout or here normal to, uh, to dropout. Now in many models you want to talk about then how you are going to actually perform learning. So learning is how you fit the model. Since this is dealing with regularization, regularization happens during, during learning because overfitting occurs during learning. So this is when you need to, to deal with this. So they describe essentially the learning process. So this, is, this continues right from the previous section. Most papers, they've laid the, they've laid the background down, the previous papers. Um, you may be less interested in that part. If you're implementing this algorithm, you're going to go right to here. It's based on back, back propagation, so it's not like they're creating a whole new learning technique for dropout. It, dropout uses standard back propagation. It's just you're removing certain neurons at certain times. They describe kind of how this works with unsupervised pre-training. This is very important. This was the one of the foundations of deep learning, essentially, uh, which they're which you're talking about here. That's the seminal deep learning paper. But uh, now you've got to actually prove that what you've done is something significant. That is a new contribution to, uh, to research. There's two, way, two predominant ways that you go about doing that. You either do it um, empirically, which is what they're doing here, so experimental results, or you prove it. You do a bunch of mathematical proofs. Empirical results is often often what I will go with. You will go with data sets. These are all well-established data sets that often you don't want to invent your own data set. That makes it even more difficult to really prove that you're doing anything significant. 
the the ideal is to use an existing data set like you have here cite a paper that got a great result and show that you got a slightly better result and why these are all um computer computer vision and then that's a time speech time series computer vision computer vision and natural language processing so this is great they're they're doing a cross sort of sectional uh empirical they're going to do all of these data sets and actually show you how to um how their data how their algorithm performed on them here you and this is great this is with dropout without uh, without dropout and with dropout they can show you that for those that they had there's a nice clean division of where they are training with less uh with less overfitting they show you then numerically also you always want to show it graphically and numerically and that's how they actually demonstrate all right, that's my overview of how to read a academic paper. Just a very, very introduction to it. There's quite a few videos really on this particular topic, and I, I suggest looking at those as well, just to get a full perspective on the topic. If you found this interesting, then definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel because there will be more on this topic area and others as well. If you found this one interesting, definitely like and let me know. Thank you very much.